Last thing we're going to talk about in terms of uh, graphing logarithmic functions is our transformation. So again, just like we did with exponential functions, we're basically looking at how we can transform these. So uh, here's our A. Again, if you notice A when you're talking about a logarithmic function, uh, it's going to be the coefficient of your logarithm. Now our base could be whatever the base might be of your logarithm. It could be 2, could be 3, could be E, could be 10. Uh, we'll look at a couple of those examples uh, later on in this section. Uh, and then A, of course, is going to affect the vertical shape of your graph. If A is negative, it will reflect about your x-axis. Uh, you can go back and look in section 2.5 if you can't remember what effects A, B, C, and D have on your graph. So here you go, here's B. Uh, B is x is coefficient. Now uh, you need to make sure that it's what you're taking the log of. So if it's, if it's multiple things, more than one term, then it'll be in parentheses, or it'll just be what comes right after the log base, in this case, 2. And then C. C, uh, I've already used green. Here's our C. Now one thing you do need to realize is that if you have a C, then it's going to be in parentheses. If you don't see a parentheses and you just have something that looks like this, the log base 2 of x minus 4, then that negative 4 is actually D. So for it to be C, it has to be inside parentheses. So kind of keep that in mind as you're working through problems like this. And then lastly, we'll talk about our D. And D is going to affect your graph vertical. It's going to move your graph up or down. So it represents a vertical shift.